Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have another beginner tutorial for Drumbo. And uh, in this case, we are going to have a look a little bit more in details how to use the audio output of Drumbo inside AUM. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. Okay, let's kick off. So let's create an audio channel inside AUM. Let's uh, add a source and uh, let's search for uh, Drumbo. As you can see, we have two instances of Drumbo. We have uh, a normal one and we have one which says that there are eight outputs. So let's select the first one, first of all. So let's click on it and let's expand. Now let's go on the property of the track, clicking where it says one. And now let's scroll down. Where it says audio, it says audio from module, uh, module input. But I want to focus on the audio output for now. So it says audio to one and it says master. So let's connect the AUM keyboard and let's play some notes. Of course, it doesn't play anything because we don't have any, any modules which generate any sound. So let's add an FM operator. Let's click some notes or press some notes on the keyboard. Okay, now let's go back to the properties. And where it says audio to one, it says master. So it's going out to the master. And that is actually going out through the audio channel here. And in this case, I have headphones connected. So that is why you hear the sound. Now, let's go back to the properties here. And where it says audio to one, let's select, for example, uh, external output one. Let's again play some notes. And you still hear the sound because uh, external output one is the default one here on this audio channel. Let's go back to Drumbo again. Let's select again um, something different and let's go for default module out. Now, in this case, and let's uh, show up the keyboard. If I press the note, you don't hear anything, okay? Because the output is not going to go to the master, which is redirected to the default output, is now going either to the external output number one. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. That is going to the default module out, which is not connected now. The other thing I want to show you is, let's say that I want to select here where it says two. Let's collect there. And, um, and we're going to send the audio to two, which is truck number two. Now, if I press the note, it will play. And if I go to the main view here, now it will not play because the keyboard is assigned to go to send MIDI messages um, to these um, to the main track, which is active. Now, let's go to track number one and let's add them um, some some notes so that we can have it to play for us. So let's. Um, it doesn't matter which one, but let's select some notes and let's click play. Now you hear sound, right? Let's go back to the main track and let's click play. Now you, I muted track number two and you can see uh, you have output going out from track number one to track number two and that track number two is set to go by default to, to the master indeed. If we stop playing and we unmute the track and we go to track number two and we go to the properties, you will find that the audio is going, audio to one is going to the master, okay, which is selected at the very bottom here. Okay, hopefully that uh, uh, makes sense in terms of actually redirecting um, audio output to the external output number one or to any other track and the, the difference between redirecting the output to master and also to the default module out. Now, let's go a little bit further and let's uh, remove this instance of Drumbo and let's use the other one, which has um, um, eight outputs. So let's select it. Okay, perfect. And let's uh, uh, link it to the AUM keyboard. Now, as you can see, in the main view here, you have eight tracks, and you can see that uh, here under these uh, the volume knobs, you can you can see it says external output number one, external external output number two, etc. etc. Indeed, if you go to the first track and you go to the property, you will see that the audio 
is yeah where it says audio to one the first output in, is going to external output one which is uh, let's again add an fm operator for simplicity like so again it will go out from this main channel now something else as well that you need to be aware if you go back to the properties and you can you go to select uh, or choose the other option you can redirect the output to another track but there is no master here as you can see right you have the default module out but there is no master okay so let's say that uh, i um exit this and i select track number two and i add again an fm operator and i insert some note here like so and i click play now you will not hear any output because it's going to if you check the property to external output number two okay now if you click here again you have the choice to redirect it to number one to default module out as well to any other tracks but not uh, to master as i just explained let's uh, uh, redirect it to external output number one and of course you hear sound because that is coming out uh, from this uh, um, channel audio channel okay but let's configure it as it was before to go to external output number two and let's click play you don't hear any output because that output is not mapped to any um audible audible um, um hardware in this case my headphones so let's create another audio channel and this this time when we click on the plus sign okay let's again go for drumbo of course you could select um, a normal instance of Drumbo, the instance that has eight outputs. But you see an additional one here, which says Drumbo eight outputs at A1. Okay, if you select that one, you will hear uh, sounds going through. And let me mute this and play. You can see activity there, which is playing. Now, and what uh, this means is that this instance here, or this version of Drumbo on this channel, is the same as this one, but it's taking the output number two. Indeed, if I change these to three, and I mute, you don't hear anything, because inside track number three, I don't have anything, right? But if I was to add, again, an FM operator in here, and add some notes, You will hear sounds going through output number three, which is captured captured here. So in this way, you can have different outputs um, that you can use in different ways. Now, let me show you what happens when you duplicate this. You can see automatically says it takes uh, output number three. And let's continue uh, duplicating there, number four, then five. As you can see, the next one would be six, seven, and eight. Now, if I duplicate again, let's see what happens. You have an X here. And the reason you have an X, which means none, because he only has uh, eight outputs available. And therefore, um, you exhaust all the different outputs. Now, let's remove that because it doesn't make sense to actually have it. So let's remove the channel. So why would you want different uh, outputs going out from Drumble? Because you may use them in a different way. So let's say, for example, that on this channel number two, we're going to add a reverb. So we go up here. We just select the reverb like so. Let's click play. Now you have output going out on track um, number or, or on the channel number two and also on channel number three. Now um, let's go back to an instance of Drumbo. So track number two has C2 notes as well as track number three. Let's uh, change uh, this note and let's go for an E, like so, an E3. Okay. This is the beauty of having a multi-output. You can go here now on this audio channel, add a different effect. 
So for example, let's go for things bubble. And let's choose also a preset, like bubble delay and then click play. So you can hear uh, bubbles are working here on output number three of Drumbo, like so. And you can hear also, if I mute the second audio channel, uh, the output from uh, the second output, which has a reverb. And this can be very useful. For example, you could decide that in uh, you have different type of percussion or different part of drums um, um, spread around different tracks, and then you can apply different effects to each of the different tracks. So that is actually quite um, quite handy if you want to actually um, work with different effects and different type of outputs and so on. And, uh, and as you know, um, because you can add more than one effect, you can double click and add another effect, then it can get some, it can get really, really interesting. Okay, I'm going to stop here. I hope you enjoyed this uh, beginner tutorial. And as always, see you next time. Bye.